Hello and welcome. Tonight, more trouble for embattled Adamoa State Resident Electoral Commissioner Hudu Ari. President Buhari approves his immediate suspension and prosecution if found liable over his role in the Adamoa State governorship election. Military says attacks by terrorists in the Lake Chad region declines by 60%, but says more work required to completely degrade the insurgents. 214 people killed in three months in Kaduna State. Governor El Rafai appeals to the federal government to escalate security operations across the Northwest and Niger states. On business news tonight, the Federation Account Allocation Committee shares about 714 billion Naira among the three tiers of government as revenue for the month of March. And on sports news tonight, Serie A Giants Juventus 15 points penalty over transfer dealings has been reversed by Italy's highest sporting court. The court says the case should be re-examined. And from Abuja, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, writes House of Representatives ad hoc committee, says his ministry plans a comprehensive response to the lawmakers on the alleged illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil. And in international news from London, at least 78 people have been killed in a crush at a school in the Yemeni capital, Sanar, during a distribution of charity for Ramadan. It appears there may be more trouble for the embattled resident electoral commissioner for Adamo Estate, Mr. Ari Hudu Yunusa Ari. This is because the president has formally approved his immediate suspension from office pending the completion of investigation by the Inspector General of Police on his conduct and actions during the supplementary election in Adamo Estate. This is because a statement from the office of the secretary to the government of the federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, explains that president President Mohamed Buhari also directed the immediate investigation and prosecution if found liable of Mr. Ari by the Inspector General of Police. The President also directed the investigation by the Inspector General of Police, Director General of the Department of State Services and the Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defence Corps of the role played by their officers in aiding and abetting the conduct and actions of Mr. Ari. He ordered that if found culpable, appropriate disciplinary actions should be meted out to the officers. The Independent National Electoral Commission had written to the SGF to report the action of Mr. Ari in illegally announcing the result of the Adamawa State governorship election. In the meantime, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says there is no truth in the allegation by one of the candidates in the Adamawa governorship election that its national commissioners were deployed to the state during the supplementary governorship election to undermine the process. In a statement, the electoral body explains that such deployment is standard policy and practice where even resident electoral commissioners and staff from the headquarters of neighboring states are sent for such assignments when necessary. The statement adds that the deployment had no ill intentions, nor was it meant to undermine anyone as alleged, stating that in all other states, the RECs worked cooperatively with the national commissioners, except for Damoa State, for reasons that are now obvious to all. The commission describes the insinuation as a claptrap, which should be disregarded. And let's talk security now. The Nigerian Armed Forces continues to record more successes in their fight against terror in the northeast and other parts of the country. The military says troops have neutralized 63 Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa terrorists between March and April 15, and in the process liberated over 150 kidnapped victims across the country. Major General Musa Dan Madami, the Director of Defense Media Operations, told the media at the defense headquarters that the troops in the process also recovered several items including about 36 AK-47 rifles and other sophisticated weapons among other items. On 13 April 2023, troops Operation Wild Punch intercepted a vehicle along Kaduna Briningwari and arrested a suspect, a suspect carrying 1,000 1,079 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, 
886 rounds of 7.62 mm NATO belted ammunition, 139 rounds of 7.62 mm special tracer ammunition, and 5 AK-47 rifle empty magazines. Consequently, within the week in view, troops recovered 13 AK-47 rifles, 16 AK-47 magazine, 1,531 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, 886 rounds of 7.62 mm NATO belted ammunition, 139 rounds of 7.62 mm special tracer ammunition, and 30 rounds of empty cases of 7.62 mm special. Other items recovered include 87 detonators, 33 rolls of detonator cables, 11 safety fuse, 43 main explosive charging chargers, 25 motorcycles, 21 mobile phones, buffering radios, 887 Russell cattles, 7 trucks, and a sum of 230,900 naira only. Meanwhile, the military says attacks by terrorists in the Lake Chad region have dropped by over 60% owing to the operations by troops of the Multinational Joint Task Force. However, despite the successes recorded, the Joint Task Force, uh, the Multinational Joint Task Force, says more work needs to be done to completely degrade the terrorists. The commander of the MNJTF, Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim, made this known while handing over the command to a new officer at the headquarters quarters of the force in Chad. It's about an hour's flight from Meidugri, the epicenter of the 14 years of insurgency, to the capital of the Chad Republic, where the headquarters of the MNJTF is located. Chief of Self. Seated at the conference hall of the MNJTF are foreign military attaches, senior military personnel, officers and soldiers from the four participating countries here to witness the handing over of the command to a new commander after 20 months of intense operations overseen by the outgoing force commander. It is on record that attacks have dropped by as much as 60 percent. The outgoing commander, Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim, acknowledged the contributions of the country's foreign nations, officers and personnel of the MNJTF. The Lake Chad Basin area is much better secured today than it was at the beginning of my stewardship. Evidence abounds that internally displaced persons are returning to their homes in thousands from refugee camps in Chad, in Cameroon, and in Nigeria. Time to sign the hand of a note, after which the new force commander is decorated with the badges of the MNJTF before the flag is handed over to him to signify the commencement of his command. Accepting the task ahead of him, the new force today, commander today. makes a brief remark. Operations that have been conducted, successes, challenges, and the current situation. So it is expedient that this conflict be brought to an end for the, to the, for the benefit of all. After the documentations were completed, Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim pays a courtesy visit to the new commander in his office before commissioning a building used as a canteen and indoor sport hall, renamed after a soldier who died during one of the operations. Major General Ibrahim then lays a wreath in honor of personnel who lost their lives during operations under his command. He then inspects the guard of honor before his final farewells with senior personnel and staff of the headquarters. In Kaduna State, the government says that about 214 persons were killed as a result of attacks by terrorists, communal clashes and reprisals across the state from January to March this year. This was contained in the first quarter 2023 security report presented to the state security council. Receiving the report, Governor Nasser Rafai appealed to the federal government to escalate security operations across the seven frontline states of the northwest and Niger state. The two reports just presented 
by Mr. Samuel Arwan, our Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, indicates the persistence of security challenges, including terrorism, banditry, and the unfortunate toll in killings, kidnappings, injuries, and threats to the livelihoods of our people. We regret the pain and losses, pray for the repose of the souls of those killed, pay tribute to the victims of various crimes, and reiterate our solidarity with them. As the, as the statistics presented show, there has been some slight year-on-year -year improvement in fatalities and other incidences of criminality across the state between 2021 and 2022. We thank the federal government for, for finally authorizing the launch of these combined military and police offensives. We commend the military and security forces for their efforts and sacrifices as they work to uproot the criminals. I wish to stress that in this region, this vital mission requires a comprehensive and consistent sweep across the Northwest and Niger states for sustained success. We appeal for an escalation of security operations over the next 39 days remaining till the end of the tenure of this administration and beyond, so that the change of button at the federal level does not result in a dangerous lull that criminal outlaws can exploit. Meanwhile, the General Officer Commanding 1 Mechanized Division of the Nigerian Army, Major General Lufemi Akijobi, in his remark gave some insight into the efforts being made to tackle the menace. We have not noted the various dynamics, the uh, threats, what we have seen in particular areas, and where it's prevalent and where it moves to. And this will form uh, the object of our analysis for subsequent operations across the state. To reduce the challenge in southern Kaduna, indeed in other areas too, we need quite some push on the non-kinetic line uh, so that we, people can learn to live together in peace. Let's go over to the Niger Delta, where the Bayosa state government has imposed restrictions on the movement of tricycles in the state capital, Yenagua, and its environs. By the restriction order, the operations of tricycle is now between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. daily. This follows a violent clash between some youths and tricycle operators, which led to the loss of lives. We must behave as normal human beings. This youthful exuberance of getting angry at every provocation. For 50 naira, somebody, two souls, two souls. And all of these people now will now become fatherless. For what? 50 naira. And then we now have reprisal attacks. The keke burnt down. And before you know, this will now develop to as if it is Bielsa versus Hausa. That must stop. There is no fight between Bielsa and Hausa. The Hausas, the Fulanese, and every other ethnic nationality in Nigeria are living here in Bielsa. From the beginning of the creation of Bielsa up until today. They have contributed to the economy of this state. Bayelsa has also been a fertile ground for all of them. Let me warn and advise citizens of Nigeria, those living in Bayelsa, who are resorting to self-help by way of carrying weapons, either in their tricycles or in their business premises. And let the security take this very serious. Anyone found with weapons should be immediately arrested. In part two, after the break, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, uncovers site use for lubricant adulteration. That's in River State. We'll have that story and more in a moment.
Please join us again. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news live from Channel's television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. More trouble for embattled Adamawa State Resident Electoral Commissioner Hudu Ari. President Buhari approves his immediate suspension and prosecution if found liable over his role in the Adamawa State governorship election. Military says attacks by terrorists in the Lake Chad region declines by 60%, but says more work required to completely degrade the insurgents. 214 people killed in three months in Kaduna State. Governor El Rafai appeals to the federal government to escalate security operations across the Northwest and Niger states. And at least 78 people have been killed in a crush at a school in the Yemeni capital, Sanaa, during a distribution of charity for Ramadan. Following the situation in Sudan, the federal government says it plans to evacuate Nigerian students trapped there amid fighting in the country. This follows requests made by the students who pleaded that they be evacuated from the troubled nation. The country is witnessing hostilities between two generals who seized power in a 2021 coup. Army Chief Abdel Fattah al burhan and his deputy Mohamed Hamdan Dalgo, uh, who commands the paramilitary rapid support forces. RSF. The federal government, through the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, says meetings are being held as to how best to handle the evacuation process. The commission, in a statement, explains that it received the letter of solicitation by Sudan chapter of the National Association of Nigerian Students for possible evacuation of students, especially those in Khartoum, the Sudanese capital. NIDCOM gave the assurance that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, which is in charge of emergency evacuations, is consulting with the Nigerian mission in Sudan and other relevant agencies on the matter. And the Nigeria Security and Civil Defence Corps, NSCDC, has uncovered a site used for lubricant adulteration in Iwofe, Rume Precomp community, will be a Koloku government area of River State. The legal site is located right at the back of a functional petrol station in the area. The NSCDC says four suspects were arrested on site, while its personnel are on the trail of the owner of the petrol station. The NSCDC commandant in River State, Mr. Michael Oga, who led journalists to the site on Thursday, said it was uncovered by the command's anti-vandal land patrol team following credible intelligence. A crime site, an illegal site that is being used for the adulteration of engine oil and also the counterfeiting of lubricants, especially total oil. I think we've already shown you the stencil which they are using to print stickers that they used to stick to this illegal oil that produces here in this place. So we want you to be aware that due to credible information, our anti wonder squad was able to identify this place. Um, we are going to evacuate these products and we're going to seal this station. Um, we're also going to charge them to court. We turn our attention to health now. Families must be empowered through strategic nutrition education interventions to sustain West Africa's over 400 million youth population to achieve optimal learning outcomes in today's competitive knowledge economy. Well, these were the words of the Vice President, Professor Yemir Shibajo, at the opening ceremony of the 17th ECOWAS Nutrition Forum holding in Abuja, where he was represented by the Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Ehanire. Our correspondent Kayla Megua reports that the three-day event is a collaboration between Nigeria's Federal Ministry of Health and the West African Health Organization. 
It is the 17th ECOWAS Nutrition Forum and it's holding for the first time in Abuja. Issues around stunting, wastage, anemia and childhood poverty are taking center stage at this conference. Deliberate action by governments in the region to reverse this trend capable of crippling productivity among people in West Africa could make the difference. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, eight food groups are necessary for children to be sufficiently nourished. In West Africa, a paltry 16% of children access five food groups. 38% only access three food groups, while 45.4% can only access two food groups. Hence the need for a system-based approach to turn the fortunes of the region around. To move forward on this path, it is essential to review the support that public policies currently provide to nutrition. This will enable us to identify the reforms to be undertaken as a priority. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Shimbajo, represented by the Minister for Health, Dr. Osage Hanire, believes that aligning with the Sustainable Development Goals, preparing young Africans for a fierce, competitive knowledge economy, will require adequate nourishment. And it is pro projected by some that by 2050, our region will have up to 600 million people. Almost 400 will be young people, 400 million will be young people. And the, needs, the need becomes imperative to provide sustainable nutrition diet, quality basic education and health care for all of them. As a matter of priority, this calls for more public awareness and the strategic nutrition education interventions aimed to empower the family, particularly the woman, who is the mother of the house, and to have access to the family, uh, you must be able to get to the woman uh, in the family as a social unit of society, with messages on sustainable healthy diets right from infancy to adulthood. This conference hopes to accelerate multi-sectoral collaborations to achieve nutrition security across the ECOWAS sub-region to attain global targets. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. And still in the West Africa region, the Regional Centre for Disease Surveillance and Control is advocating strengthening of collaboration among West African countries in order to enhance the capacity for surveillance, disease prevention and response to epidemics and other health emergencies in the region. This was the resolve of the seventh meeting of the Board of Directors of the ECOWAS Regional Centre for Surveillance and Disease Control, which held in Abuja. The meeting was attended by representatives of member countries, including Benin Republic, Cape Verde, Liberia and Nigeria. One of the key achievements we have done is during COVID-19, where we have got the political support of our leaders to commit to invest more in health security across the regions. So we have appointed President Muammar Wari as a champion, and with his support, we mobilize the political level to invest more in health security. You know, we also have as a key achievement on the review of the public health laws in all our countries in such a way that Minister of Finance can commit more domestic resources to prevent, detect, and control major outbreaks as well. We are also working with different tranches of the populations in a way to prepare them to better respond to public health threats across the region as well. So it's a, still a work ongoing. You know that sometimes results are delaying to be seen, but we believe that at the end of the day, we will be in the positions to get our systems better prepared to address health diseases. We are working a lot on Lassa fever because it's a major public health threat in our regions. Lassa is currently affecting up to four to five countries on a yearly basis in the regions. So we have created a framework where all countries can, can work together and come up with research proposal to identify good drugs, therapeutics, and also commodities to appropriately detect and control Lassa fever outbreaks in the regions. We're also promoting experience sharing and also lesson uh, uh, lesson learned across countries 
And away from health matters, the recent warning strike by aviation workers in the country may have lasted only two days. But players in the sector are calling for dialogue to avoid a situation in which activities in the industry could be crippled by prolonged industrial action. For a former director general of the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Mr. Roland Yayi, strikes should be a last resort in resolving industrial disputes. While urging members of the different unions to imbibe the culture of dialogue, Mr. Yayi also wants the government to do everything to ensure operations in the industry do not come to a halt. The gridlock inward in Namdi Azikiwe International Airport is an unusual one as vehicles crawl into the airport while some passengers hit the road, trekking to ensure they don't miss their flights. Footage from around the country show the effects of the two-day warning strike. Traffic jams, long treks, cancelled flights as well. Anytime aviation unions embark on an industrial action, airline operators, passengers and, and other commuters in Nigeria suffer greatly. Members of five unions in the aviation industry had declared a two-day warning strike which interrupted activities at various airports across the country. A former director general of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, decries the negative impact of the strike on the nation. It's unfortunate that uh, we have different stakeholders who unfortunately are not at the uh, nose of a bullet, so to speak, who at various times decide that they would rather, you know, go on strike creating a major disruption to the you know, free flow of industry than engage in constructive consultations. Now, it needs to be said that the major impact of their actions are not necessarily felt by their own you know, uh, employer, uh, employers. It's usually felt by the airlines and the consumers. You know, to a large extent, I, I mean, we believe that it is important for positive engagement in other ways rather than uh, you know, creating a complete disruption, not only to the system, but to the entire economy. Some passengers bemoan the impact of the strike. I was supposed to have been here by uh, over two hours ago. You know, but we have to wait for two hours before the flight from Lagos got to Enugu Airport before taking us to this place? Uh, well, first of all, it was almost like an ambush. Uh, I, I wasn't even aware there was any uh, problem until I arrived at the airport this morning in Enugu. And, um, well, this flight should have taken off at about 8.30. And we didn't take off until, uh, I think, past 12 o'clock. All Nigerians suffered enough. Must we still add suffering to our own people? We have suffered enough. Sorry. Sorry. Some of the workers at the Malamaminu Kano International Airport who had barricaded a section of the airport enumerate their demands. Our demands are three. One has been there for the past two or three years. That is the issue of minimum wage. They are trying to deny aviation workers. Two, condition of service. Then the third one is demolition of Fan and Nama headquarters in Lagos. Although normal activities have resumed at the nation's airport, the workers insist that the non-implementation of the minimum wage Refusal of the National Salaries, Income and Wages Commission to honor agreements between the government and the unions and the planned demolition of the headquarters of the Federal Airport Authority, Nigeria Airspace Management Agency and the Civil Aviation Authority in Lagos by the Minister of Aviation may lead to a full-scale industrial action unless something is done. <laughs> We head to Abuja for more stories. Linda is standing by. Hi, Linda. Hello, Millicent. To the National Assembly, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has responded to the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee, which is investigating the alleged sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil valued at over $2.4 billion and crude oil exports to global destinations from 2014 to date. 
This was made known in a letter to the committee indicating that the ministry is trying to put together a comprehensive response of the matter. The committee chairman who read the letter, however, says it came a lot later than expected and that the committee still expects the Attorney General to provide the required response and also appear before members next Thursday. While we appreciate the Attorney General's response, we would like to indicate that it came a lot later than we expected and it came without the response referred to. So we'll appreciate it if the Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice provides this response and to also appear before the committee next week, uh, Thursday. So let's give him the window to appear before the committee. Unfortunately, the Honorable Minister of Finance has still been evasive. The committee has not received any submission or response from the Honorable Minister of Finance. The Accountant General sent a response and has not responded to our follow-up because we have asked further questions to what he provided us information about. And there are other entities we have scheduled. I believe the NNPCL should be appearing before us also next week. But we want to call on the Honorable Minister of Finance to, like the Attorney General, show regard and respect for the separation of powers as enshrined in our Constitution and respond promptly to the request of the committee so that we can get to the bottom of our investigation. The Director General of the National Inland Waterways Authority, Dr. George Moralu, says the agency is taking proactive measures to open up black, blocked channels, essentially to avoid the unprecedented flood experienced across the country last year. Dr. Moralu stated this in the charts with State House correspondents after a private meeting with President Mohamed Ubari at the State House. Dr. Moralu explains that the agency is carrying out massive sensitization of the possible flood-prone areas as efforts are ongoing to ensure that River Niger and Benue are made navigable for vessels to have access to other ports being developed. Proactively, what we are doing is to first of all sensitize the people, identify the, the critical areas and get people to know what is going to happen with time with regards to clearing yes water high sense are being cleared on a regular basis wrecks are removed uh, channels that are blocked we do everything we can within the limits of our resources to open up those channels so that we can have easy flow of water during this period so what we are doing is to use the resources we have to do what we call maintenance dredging okay that is opening up channels deepening channels where we have information based on the statistical report from our department where we have the such uh, blockages and then we keep doing what we can do to ensure that these channels are open all year round we do the basic survey and once we identify them we set the process in motion to remove them we're doing some now as we keep identifying them and you know these things like what i said like wrecks like floating debris are not fixed items that you will say i will remove now and they won't be there again you can remove a wreck tomorrow and by next tomorrow another wreck will come what are these wrecks broken down vessels that are condemned logs and what have you so as we identify them using survey do you get, identify the coordinates the next thing we do is to set in motion the process of removing them in other stories, the leadership of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria has come out to clear the air about the claim of possible crisis among members. The national president of the association, Mr. Tomi Okun, told a press conference in Abuja today that he's still the leader of the group, despite the court judgment that absolved its former president, Mr. Innocent Bola Aldu, of human trafficking charges. Mr. Okun was speaking at the headquarters of the association in Abuja. According to him, the former president was duly expelled by the National Executive Council of the Association for Anti-Union Activities. 
An Abuja High Court had discharged and acquitted the former president and three others who were prosecuted by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, where they were accused of engaging in human trafficking and exploitation of vulnerable people. The case did not have any bearing with the decision of the union to expel them. The expel president was as a result of his anti-union activities and infractions of the constitution of the association. Now if you say the decision of NEC was Kankaru, why do you challenge it? And the case is going on in NIC. And you just wake up and still claim to be president. So the public should not be misled and the workers should know. Because followers know their leader. And that is the extent we said, let us put the record straight so that the public will be properly informed that I, Dr. Tommy Etimokun, is the president of Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. And to company news, Lush Hair Nigeria has organized a hangout event in Lagos to celebrate hairstylists, some of whom have grown to be partners of the brand. Through this event, the hair brand says it is seeking to encourage the hairstylists, stimulate their creativity and also get their feedback on the brand's different hair extensions. It's the second edition of the Lush Hair Stylist Hangout. The brand is celebrating creativity, entrepreneurship and growth through these hairstylists. From piecing together this puzzle to this floral corner, there are different exciting activities and games lined up to add sparkly colors to the event. Some of the hairstylists at the event speak about what makes the brand special. In my area, I'm also the CP, the leader. All the stylists in that area, they are using Lush now because of the tension and the good product that they produce. Lush always takes the people from the grassroots. There are some people that you call them first adopters. Once they adopt a product, they don't want to go back. So for people like that, when they see us coming out to say, this product is nice, they will want to give it a try. We have high demand for lush products in the market, so we don't want to move with the trend. Beautiful and those curls! Come on! We don't like plain. Lush Hair Nigeria says it is not only seeking to meet the beauty needs of the African woman, but will also continue to support strategic women-oriented activities. Those hairstylists who are not just hairstylists, but they are like our counselors, they are our gist partners, our gossip partners. You know, they are very talented. They do so much, you know, for women, making women beautiful. And we're just here to appreciate them for their years of, of creativity, their years of diligence, and all, and how they've grown so far over the years. Done with a lot of excitement, the painting competition allows artistic expression of guests at the event and the monetary reward for winners is the icing on the cake. Is this our best artist today? The idea of making hair is actually an art, right? Um, I can walk into a regular salon today and decide to make braids or decide to just do crochets. But what about reaching out to someone who is skilled, who knows how to turn that simple braids or that simple crochet into something monumental. Do you understand? So we know that there is versatility in hair. Yes, it could be just a pack line there, but in the hands of one hair stylist, it's actually magic, it's actually art as a brand. So we are not just going there to say, okay, buy our hair, make the regular. We are daring you to buy our extensions and do the monumental, so that is why. Lush Hair is also introducing a new range of quality hair extensions that are extra light, soft and are in different creative colors. And that's all from Abuja. Now to Anne for business news. Thank you, Linda. Before we go to Anne, just one more story. The Sultan of Sokoto and the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Saad Abubakar III, says 
the crescent to mark the end of Ramadan fasting has been cited. In a broadcast this evening, the Sultan says his office received information on the sighting of the moon to end the fasting, confirming that Friday, April the 21st, is the Idil Fitri celebration. While urging Muslims in Nigeria and across the world to continue to live in peace with one another, he prayed to God to grant the newly elected leaders of the country the wisdom to stir the country to prosperity. It is a pleasure to announce that today, Thursday, the 29th day of Ramadan 1444, which is equivalent to 20th April 2023, marked the end of Ramadan 1444 after Hijra of our most noble leader, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We therefore declare that tomorrow, Friday, 21st April 2023, becomes the first day of Shawwal 1444 and the day for Eid al-Fitr. May Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reward us for the ibadah to be performed in the month of Ramadan and grant us al Jannah for those without his help. Well, Anne is just about ready for business news. It's over to you, Anne. Thank you, Millicent. Hello and welcome to Business News. Let's begin with the Federation Account Allocation Committee, the FAC, which has distributed a total of 714.62 billion Naira as March revenue to the federal, state and local governments. This disbursement shows a decrease of 8.04 billion Naira, and that's when you compare it to February's allocation of 722.67 billion Naira. But well, the committee says the federal government received 276.14 billion Naira, the state received 232.129 billion Naira, while the local government councils got 171.25 billion Naira. About 35.1 billion Naira was also shared to the relevant states as 13% derivation revenue. According to FAC, the total distributable revenue comprised of distributable statutory revenue value-added tax and electronic money transfer levies. As part of its efforts to increase the export of Made in Nigeria products, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, has commissioned an export trade house in China. In a statement, the NEPC Executive Director, Mr. Ezra Yakusak, reveals that the project is targeted at improving sustainable trading flow between Nigeria and China increase the share of Nigerian products in target markets, as well as increase foreign exchange inflow into the economy. So far, NEPC has launched and operationalized a total of four export trade houses located in Egypt, Togo, Kenya, and in China. Tesla shares sank nearly 10% today after Chief Executive Elon Musk signaled the electric vehicle maker will keep cutting prices to dump up demand, drum up demand. Tesla is shaving thousands of dollars off the price of its cars as American consumers pull back spending on big ticket items due to elevated inflation. Also, the electric vehicle maker's gross margins fell to more than two-year low in the first quarter, a missing market estimate. Tesla made $2.51 billion from January through to March, and that's down $3.32 billion a year ago. While revenue rose 24%, the $23.33 billion, however, the company's operating profit margin fell. And the Nigerian Exchange Limited says the Nigerian capital market is set to see a renewal in exchange-traded fund listings with four new ETFs in the pipeline, according to the divisional head capital market, Jun Chiemeke. The Nigerian Exchange Limited will allow investors reduce risk or profitable returns on business. 
And let's head to the equities market now, where it closed the final trading session in the holiday shortened week in positive territory, meaning the color is green today. Any John Mikwa has the details. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stock market report. Well, Transcore is still doing its thing at the NGX, gaining 22 cobble today to close at 2 Naira 45 cobble after trading 240 million in volume, valued at 589 million Naira. That's what it drove in the market today. Good one. Access Co traded 152 million, while UBA were more profit taking because they did lose today. 39 million is what it traded. Now, let's look at the sectors now. Oil and gas is what we see, retaining that bearish sentiment it had for a couple of days now. Well, today, O and O lost, Itana Oil lost, Adova lost, so that's why oil and gas is in the red. Banking, however, is on the flip side, 2.9, looking good there. Full gas, access, co fidelity, is any they gain today. While um, consumer goods is marginally red, and it's uh, because of Nigerian breweries mostly, international breweries also, they lost today. And uh, that, of course, tells us how the all share index will look like. There you go 0.35% there, and at least we've gained like 200 here. Imagine our game, but a good one. And it is good enough to keep the ball on the floor of the exchange. So the ball is going to be here for this long holiday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, enjoying itself. And we'll see you there again on Tuesday. That's the Stock Market Report. I'm Ini John Mekwa. It's back to you. Thanks for watching Business News. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Millicent. Thanks, Anne. Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship has exploded on its maiden flight, cutting short a key step in the entrepreneur's development of a rocket vessel to eventually take humans to the moon and Mars. No one was hurt in the on-crew test that took off from Texas' east coast earlier today. Despite the failed attempt, Mr. Musk says his company will try again in a couple of months. Here's Simon Pusey with other international stories and around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. At least 78 people have been killed in a crush at a school in the Yemeni capital Sana'a during a distribution of charity for Ramadan. <laughs> Shoes, clothing and other debris line the scene where the stampede happened. Hundreds of people had crowded into the school to receive donations, which amounted to about $9 per person. Uh, the Prime Minister of the Houthi movement told reporters a full investigation was underway. Houthi rebels have run the city since they drove out the government in 2015. The event happened during the final days of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which is marked by a period of fasting. Norway's ambassador to Sudan says conditions are hellish in the capital Khartoum amid intense fighting between rival military factions. <coughs> it comes as the fighting continues for a sixth day. Prolonged gunfire and explosions have been heard throughout the night, marking the failure of the second ceasefire attempt in as many days. Residents have been fleeing Khartoum, fearful about dwindling food supplies and the collapse of medical services. Clashes have been reported elsewhere in Sudan too. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is due to hold online talks with the leaders of regional bodies, including the African Union, the Arab League and IGAD, in the hope of arranging a workable ceasefire. Bringing together the chairperson of the African Union, the secretary general of the Arab League, and other, um, and also the executive secretary of EGAD and other relevant uh, organizations. The continued heavy fighting in Sudan is having a devastating consequences for Sudanese civilians, as well as our staff and other members of the international community who are caught in the crossfire. Uh, we reiterate to the parties to the conflict that they must respect international law. The K-pop star Moonbin has died at the age of 25, that's according to his record label. He was found unresponsive by his manager at his apartment in Seoul. Police say it appeared he has taken his own life, but that an autopsy was being carried out. His record label said in a statement, Moonbin unexpectedly left our world and became a star in the sky. 
Two people have been killed after severe thunderstorms rolling through the Midwest in the United States have produced several tornadoes. The rural town of Cole in Oklahoma was hit hard by a monster tornado, ripping off roofs, knocking down trees, dropping golf ball-sized hail and causing widespread power outages. The causes of the deaths were not yet immediately available. British pop star Elton John has urged U.S. senators not to ease up on the fight against HIV and AIDS. Well, thank you, Elton. Let me return the, the compliment. Thank you for what you have done. It comes as Congress faces a September deadline for reauthorizing the multi-billion dollar U.S. program to fight the disease. We need to keep our foot on the accelerator. We've come so far in such a short time, relatively. By extending PEPFAR for another five years and fully funding it, together, we can continue the march towards any AIDS for everyone everywhere and leave no one behind. Bravo, my friends. There is no better symbol of American grateful greatness than PEPFAR. And you should all be very proud of your extraordinary efforts. And a rare solar eclipse has thrilled thousands of people who flocked to a remote Australian town for the best vantage point on Earth to watch it. Go, young, son, near, each. Hike, hike Astronomy fans and enthusiasts from around the world travelled to Exmouth, a tiny beachside town roughly 1,200 kilometres from the state capital Perth to witness the phenomenon. The sky turned dark for about 60 seconds on Thursday when the moon cast a 40 kilometer wide shadow over the area. The total solar eclipse was part of a rare hybrid eclipse which occurs only a handful of times per century. Partial eclipses were also visible across other parts of the Asia Pacific. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thanks, Simon. Time to talk sports. Manchester United crashed out of the Europa League in shambolic fashion this evening with Sevilla beating the Red Devils by three goals to nil to reach the semi-finals 5-2 on aggregate. The record six-time winners thoroughly outplayed Eric Ten Hag's side, who repeatedly shot themselves in the foot again, having scored two own goals in the first leg. United must pick up themselves to play the FA Cup semi-finals against Brighton at Wembley on Sunday. Despite a one or draw against Sporting Lisbon, Juventus scaled through to the semis on 2-1 aggregate. The other encounter is Roman and Bayern Leverkusen have also completed their sports in the semi-finals. An Italy's top sports body has cancelled the decision to dock Serie A club Juventus 15 points in a case centred on the club's transfer dealings, ordering football authorities to hold a new hearing. Now, with eight games left, uh, left to play, the decision will lift Juventus from 7th to 3rd in the Serie A table with 59 points, still 16 behind leaders Napoli, but back into the qualifying uh, spots for the lucrative European Champions League. The ruling of Italy's sports guarantee board came after Juventus, the most successful football club in Italy, appealed a sentence Italy's uh, football court issued in January as it looked at the way the club and a number of other teams dealt with player exchange deals. Away from Italy, Arsenal manager Michele Teta is confident that the Gunners can return to winning ways after damaging draws against Liverpool and West Ham United cost them momentum and the English Premier League title race. The Gunners host Premier League's uh, bottom club, Southampton, on Friday with a seven points lead up for grabs. Michele Teta admits his team has to be more ruthless as they chase their first English top flight title for 19 years. And that's a wrap on sports. I'm Kelly Eggy Guys. Back to Millicent.
Thank you, Kelly. And the main news again. President Mohammed Buhari today approved the immediate suspension and prosecution of the embattled Adamawa State Resident Electoral Commissioner Hudu Yunusa Ari, if found liable over his role in the state governorship election. The president also directed the investigation by the IGP, DSS, and NSCDC of the role played by their officers in aiding and abetting the conduct and actions of Mr. Ari. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Antonwalker. Have a good night and stay safe.